The beautiful OBS developers just released a new beta for OBS 30.2 that answers some wants that I've had going on for seven years now with OBS. While this is functionally by no means a huge update compared to others we have covered, well maybe it kind of is, it's some of the most excited I have been for an update in a long time. First and foremost, the biggest for me, the MP4 container for recording is changing again, but for a good reason. <laughs> this time it's a hybrid MP4 feature that has the recoverable goodness that the fragmented MP4 format from recent updates gave us, but it is still safe and compatible with various video editors like regular old MP4. And the big one I've been trying to get a plug-in to replicate for like seven years now, you can insert chapter markers via a hotkey that will show up in Resolve and Premiere and other video editors. Yes, no more spreadsheets, notepad documents, CSV files, literal notepads. You can set up a hotkey or a stream deck button to add markers to your stream VOD for special moments to clip or in and out points to edit from and save hours in editing or to send them to another editor and save them hours and tons of headache at long, long last. This is truly game changing. I think this will help revolutionize workflows for streamers and creators for many years to come. This is available in the usual OBS API. So there's the possibility that Elgato or someone could develop a tool that detects when you change games or other things like that to add markers to your stream, you know, based on a lot of dynamic changes. Elgato, I'm pretty sure, is already working on integrating with the Stream Deck, and Nutty has already gotten it working with customizable options through StreamerBot and Stream Deck as well. Lots of potential will explode from this. Rodney has put out a beta plugin for this update that lets you set up different hotkeys for named markers, so you can have it show in your editor whenever it's a raid or a cool game clip to clip or whatever. Pretty freaking cool. But remember, this is all beta, very beta. Next up is a fun one for those of us who like to tinker with encoder settings, which there is a lot of you in my Discord these days, eposfox.gg slash Discord. It is the ability to write the exact encoder settings used for any recording to the metadata of the video file. Then you can open the video in a program like Media Info and see the options to be able to take note of, compare to other recordings, using command line utilities to get better comparisons for quality analysis and so on. Pretty neat. Linux gets a pretty big encoder update with AV1 being available for all GPU vendors and zero copy shared texture encoding. This was a big part of the performance of the new NVENC update back in 2018. It means that your frames from your game can stay on your GPU to be encoded, saving you a bunch of latency and performance overhead versus the old way of bouncing it across your CPU and system memory to go back to the GPU for encoding. Pretty nice that Linux is basically on par with Windows now. This update also merges the multi-track and updated multi-track audio features into main OBS. These are the features behind the Twitch enhanced broadcasting update and beta that I covered earlier this year. Watch this video to learn more. It's all still in beta and you may or may not still have to apply on Twitch to get access. I think they're opening up to, you don't need account access anymore. You just need this OBS beta, but now you don't need a dedicated OBS beta for it. It should roll out to everybody pretty soon, but still in beta to test and does still require an Nvidia card at the moment though. I'm having a chat with some Twitch people, uh, probably the day this video goes live, but you know, after I'm recording this about the Twitch enhanced broadcasting setup, I should have some more juicy details to share with you very soon. There is a new composable theme system introduced to simplify theme creation and maintenance. This means that theme building and looks are going to be a lot better moving forward, but unfortunately it does mean that old themes will no longer work with this update and future updates until those themes get updated. Bummer for growing pains in the short term, but in the long term, it's great. For fun, I poked around and made a Twitch-tastic theme uh, that is a variant of the Yami theme with the Twitch's new purple color and some bolder fonts. And then I made a whole dedicated Sailor Moon theme called Sailor, just inspired by Sailor Moon. I'll probably continue tweaking it and tweak the icons and stuff at some point. There's no point in fully committing until the beta is further along, but I was having a lot of fun with it if you like eye-crushing colors, I guess. <laughs> They're linked below. There's lots of other little fixes too. If you have multiple instances of a source in your scene, audio is not duplicated from these sources anymore. Thank goodness. Closed captions are now supported for HEVC and AV1 video feeds, which is great. A big annoyance that is fixed is that whenever an open file, file open dialogue appears, such as choosing a shader in the shader filter plugin or managing a source, that dialogue now opens directly to the directory of the currently selected file rather than the default location, which was super annoying to deal with before. NVIDIA users will see better decode support and performance for media files and video capture devices, which could be huge on systems that are kind of pushing 
constraints of like render times in OBS. AV1 streamers to YouTube will no longer have their video bitrate drop to zero randomly due to packet priority issues. I've never had it happen personally, but I saw a lot of people having their stream drop to basically audio only at random with this, so I'm glad to see this fix come through. The rest are little fixes, but honestly, these kinds of quality of life updates can completely change someone's workflow, and I'm so grateful for updates like this, even if they don't introduce super major features. Remember, this is just a beta. Test it portably or in a non-mission critical environment. Remember, there will be bugs and to report them in the forum or on Discord. Remember to check out my shop at glitch.mov and watch this video here for some useful OBS tips and also remember to be kind. Rewind.